racing. You wanted the best. You got him for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws.
Hello everyone and welcome to V8s Online's coverage of the third round of the 2018 iRacing V8 Supercars Official Series. Alongside me tonight is Mr. Zachary Hanlon and in the director's booth and producing that brand new intro which hopefully you all loved, it's on debut tonight, is Mr. JK Kennedy. But Zach, I'm sure you'll agree we both love watching close racing so tonight we're in for a real treat. 43 laps in a four-door uh, sedan touring car around a circuit where lap times aren't decided by tenths. They're within hundreds and thousands, and with so little corners around this circuit, every single one is so, so critical to lap time right now. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, this is a very short track as well, so the margins are going to be very, very minimal, and with the full throttle nature of this circuit, a lot of people are going to be having to watch out on their laps and make sure that they nail every single millimetre as uh, just seeing a couple of people turning... Uh, getting a little wide as they're coming through the horseshoe section of the track there. But, uh, yeah, very important tonight to get a good qualifying result because uh, it's going to be hard to make your way through the field. But with that draft, it is going to keep the pack very tight together throughout this race. Yeah, it will. And it's going to be a very interesting race as well because we're actually expecting not one, but two pit stops. Someone might try the uh, fuel safe tactic and go for the one stop, but expect a very heavy majority of these drivers be going for that two-stop here today, which is not going to be easy with tyres either. Normally tyres do cop a battering around here with lots of right-hand corners, really wearing out the front left tyre, but with a 37 degree track temp, it's going to be even more difficult for these drivers to hold the tyres as well. So we might see not only fuel stops today, but tyres as well. Yeah, and uh, I think they'll be taking tyres on both of the stops with these V8s. They uh, obviously, they can, I think they can do the tires at the same time and the fuel usually takes a little longer um so i'd expect that they'd be taking tires both times but it will open up the strategy uh quite significantly uh and we might see people trying to go you know late on the first stint and early on the second stint or vice versa so there'll be a good amount of strategy tonight but i think that the key one of the keys to the race will be keeping in the draft of who you want to be with towards the end of the race and just making sure that you can stay there until the final uh, kind of final portion of the race and I think that's when we'll see a lot of aggression happening but you know with uh, all of these competitors we've been seeing throughout the season there's no lack of aggression anywhere throughout the race so we'll see how they go but uh, if I was playing my cards right and I was racing around here I'd probably just be trying to keep it in there until the end and then uh, trying to make more of a push towards the end of the session yeah that'd be a very very good idea but of course still drivers still in qualifying right now trying to complete their laps one driver that is on their second lap is brenton o'brien just about one of the only drivers on their second lap of course with laps being so short the uh, laps do go by pretty quickly and just whilst we're here something we'll have to quickly address because i racing is brilliant no the cars are not actually that low to the ground there's a bit of a bug in this latest build and it's causing the cars to look much, much slower than they actually should be. So, uh, very unique look for the V8 supercars of this round, but no, they're not going for the ultimate low drag performance around here. Although you do want low drag around this circuit, of course, long straights, but also these very tight corners as Brenton makes his way through the final right-hander on the power, currently sitting down in P16. So we'll see if the Port Adelaide supporter can get across the line and put himself up the order. And with an invalidated lap time, that's not going to help him. So we'll now turn our attention to Jordan Ross, who's on a second. Uh, he's on his third lap. So uh, he's still running around the circuit, just trying to get valuable mileage. Of course, this might be a very different track temp to what he's used to. So every lap in these new conditions will matter. Yeah, and it is a relatively hot track as well. And especially with so many high-speed corners around this track, that's not going to help these guys. You generally prefer cooler temperatures because the cars have a little more grip and when you're coming through those high speed corners especially in these v8 supercars they don't particularly like high speed corners very much so those hotter conditions are really going to push the limits of what these guys can do on tires this evening and that might uh incorporate a little into the strategy as well as how how much these guys are wearing on their tires yeah and there's going to be so many factors in this race strategy pace and also the start and one driver that is actually really putting in a lot of effort for the starts is luke harvey he's uh, come out of the pits two or three times and uh, right now just trying to get the optimal launch and fire himself into turn one faster than anyone else and uh, on the front row of the grid he has a fantastic shot of getting past forza navi 
if he gets the start right. But nonetheless, we'll run you through our grid because this is going to be a very exciting 43 laps. And it's going to be kicked off from the front from Forzin Al Nabi taking his first pole of the season with an 11.5, a tenth of a second clear of the TTR driver of Luke Harvey. Kurt Stenberg with a good performance in P number three, and he's got Wayne Burke alongside him for row number two. Ryan Borg rounds out the top five with championship leader Marl McMullen in position number six. Michael Talianasic, Cooper Webster, Jordan Ross, and Mitch McLeod round out the top ten. Uh, we've got Brett Loxton in P number 11 and Steve Jansen sitting alongside him in P12. Thomas Hins taking out position 13 with Jamie McKnight taking out 14th. Christian Hinton in 15th. Brenton O'Brien in 16th. Corey Preston will be looking to work his way through the field from 17th position. Danny Martin in 18th position. Braden Bateman will take out your 19th spot and Gary Cooper will take out the top 20 position with Zane Payton, Jason Cossey, Will Dodd, David Kinmond, Jonathan Ben, Job Stewart, Alvaro Rabanel, Ryan Andrews, and David Miller rounding out this 29 car grid this evening. Yep, and how good does that look? 29 V8 supercars slowly gridding their way onto the American countryside of the uh, Watkins Glen Cup circuit, a very, very fast circuit very high average speed and even quicker corners as well i think we're going to be in for a real treat here tonight of course there's strategy to play and there's a lot of passing opportunities here turn number one it can be done into the butt stop with a great run up the hill slip streaming your way down the straight and hard breaking commitment and then also the long right hand where you, if you're extremely brave you can occasionally make something happen but drivers already looking to try and save a bit of fuel. Not everyone's gridding up immediately. They want to save whatever they possibly can because it's going to be so critical with two pit stops today. Even if you don't save a heap in the first stint, if you can save a little bit in the second stint, you will still find time on your opponents. But nonetheless, the rest of the drivers funnel their way onto the grid and we get ready for the start of 43 laps here at Watkins Glen. The green flag is in the air and it's going to be lights out and away we go and Luke Harvey practicing his starts has got a good start and he's going to get alongside the drive of Forza and Alnabi as they funnel their way into the 90 degree hard breaking zone and around the outside. Very, very committed for Luke Harvey. He's going to take the race lead as they all funnel their way through the very tricky turn number one. But now into the even harder uphill section. Weave your way through the countryside. Up the hill, blind. The car's getting light and squirrely. You're side by side with opponents. And drivers are contact. Brenton O'Brien's in a lot of trouble. He's going to make contact. Here comes a pile up potentially somehow. The drivers manage to miss him. They're going to continue their way down into the bus stop now. The pack has been split into two distinct uh, packs and it's a big gaggle in the second pack as they're going almost four wide in places very ugly but it looks like for the majority a lot of drivers have got to unscathed Brenton O'Brien one of the only ones with damage but your race leader is going to be Luke Harvey from Forza and Al Nabi with uh, also uh, the driver of Wayne Burke stealing the podium away but Kurt Stenberg immediately looking for third yeah Kurt looking good there I think Steve Jansen and Brenton O'Brien were the two that came together a little bit uh, just coming up the hill section there, which is very easy to do early on the race. Just looking at uh, Danny Martin putting a nice move for, on Christian Hinton back uh, further in the field. But yeah, nice jump from Luke Harvey there. He obviously did practice those starts uh, quite a bit, but I wasn't entirely surprised to see Forzan drop behind so quickly. Forzan is renowned for trying to save fuel and trying to play the alternate strategy. And so he, he may have wanted to do that from the get-go. He may have not have wanted to have started um, from pole and, and, and lead the way. So he will look to do a lot of fuel saving behind Luke and just tuck in there. But um, as we can see, no one really breaking away in these first couple of laps is the uh, strength of that, uh, the strength of the slipstream is very, very high here. A um, lot of cars coming into the bus stop, nothing too much. Jamie McKnight actually just coming under a little bit of pressure from Brett Loxton for P number nine, or uh, actually Jamie's. Well, Brett's dropped a couple of places uh, on that lap, so I think uh, Brett might have actually just lost a place to Jamie, who's moving his way through the field. He'll be looking at the back of Mitchell McLeod for the next lap or so. Um, but yeah, relatively clean start to these guys, which is good to see on a uh, tight circuit. 
Yeah, absolutely. As they funnel their way through the long right hander. Now onto the front straight to start lap number three. And Forza Nabi is sick of looking at the back of the TTR uh, the Commodore of Luke Carby. He's going to dive to the inside and he's going to get that lead, but he's going to blink a little bit, which isn't going to make life too easy for Harvey to see where he is. And this is getting awkward for Harvey now as he goes up the hill, blind crest in the slipstream now. We'll see what he can do. But I think the bigger threat here is going to come from the driver of Wayne Burke. Look at the run he's got. He's got a fantastic run. He's got the overspeed, and he is going to try and pull out. Potentially might stay in the draft there of Luke Harvey. So they're going to stick it where they are right now. But nonetheless, the driver's really maximizing that run up the hill and uh, down into the bus stop chicane which is very surprising for me. Only a four kilometer wind, so it's not too gusty here. It's not too bad for these drivers in terms of slipstream effect, but they're really making it work here. Yeah, well, it's important to make it work, but what it doesn't, it, it doesn't so much help you overtake as it does just keep you in check with the car ahead of you. It, it might only gain you a 10th or two or three every lap as Luke Harvey's just running a little wide um, coming through the second last corner there. But it just, yeah, just, gives you enough to keep you in check with the guys ahead of you as we can see Wayne now looking very aggressive behind Luke he might be looking to get past as well but just staying in there for the time being there are still 39 laps left in this race and uh yeah so Wayne if he could just stay in this slipstream like a lot of the guys behind him will be looking to do as well um he can just attack whenever he feels like he can or he needs to as he got very sideways coming up the hill there um and he's Getting a very nice run, actually, despite that massive moment of oversteer. He's getting a nice run up the hill. So I think uh, these top five cars are all looking pretty quickly. Marlon McMullen's made up a spot or two in his journey in this race so far. And Brian Borg not, uh, not falling away. So I think these guys are going to have a pretty, pretty good run to the end. We're just having a look now at Mitchell McLeod, who's looking very hot on the heels of Jordan Ross. Jordan taking a slightly defensive line, but Mitchell's going to make a move to the inside. Oh. He's got the overlap. He just dives up there. Is there going to be a little bit of contact on the exit? No, Jordan has to run a tiny bit wide there. He's going to have the preferred line into the final corner, and he will maintain that position. Mitch did get a very nice run using the uh, a lot of the grip on the lighter concrete on the final corner. He's going to come into turn one, fire it down the inside, and if he can pull it up, just enough. Oh, but Jordan's going to make a run around the outside again. He's Wayne, Wayne Burke and Luke Harvey are getting all kinds of racy. Wayne Burke had a fantastic run into turn number one. Almost had the overlap as they went side by side up the hill. Couldn't quite do it. Luke Harvey just had enough speed. But how about now? Wayne Burke in the slipstream once more, but won't decide to get too racy right now. But that has allowed Forzen Al Nabi, our pole sitter, lots of pace and performance in sports. Uh, Commodore there. He is flying right now out to a 1.3 second lead and this battling of uh, Luke Harvey and Wayne Burke is not helping. But look at Kurt Stenberg. He's bought his way into this fight now and this is going to become a three horse race for P number two. And it could become even worse with McMullen, Borg, Webbs, the Taliantic. The entire pack is coming with this slipstream train to attack Luke Harvey in position number two. Yeah, and uh, Jordan Ross and Mitchell McLeod were continuing to battle very, very... Uh intensely there if, if they can hold that off they'll be part of that train too if they can catch back up to michael taliancic there but uh yeah i think with the amount that uh forzan's pulling out on luke now that might give wayne a little more of an incentive to get past luke um don't think that any of these guys will be trying to save fuel at this point so wayne will be looking to put the move on and he has been getting a very oh. as he see he keeps on getting very loose in that particular part there carrying a lot of speed coming up the midsection of the hill and that's just killing the run a little bit he is getting a lot of speed on luke coming up the hill but then just kills it on that tiny little bit of the uh of the exit there so just having to keep behind luke and just keep on looking and showing the nose and seeing if he can force Luke into a mistake. But Luke's a tough customer. He's well accustomed to these V8 supercars, several time race winner. Um, and I think he might have even picked up a championship back in the day in, in one of the other series. So he's uh, definitely a very experienced racer and not one to uh, succumb to pressure easily. As oh, oh Wayne Burke. got very loose. He just touched the grass there on entry to the final corner. And uh, Kurt Stenberg's now gonna have a nice run down into turn number one he's on the inside he's got a nice amount of overlap but 
Will we see what we saw before with Jordan Ross and Mitchell McLeod where uh, Wayne tries to take it round the outside? No, he's going to come back in and try and maybe go for the undercut and come out at the top of the hill with a lot more momentum compared to Stenny. So let's see how he goes here. He did run a little wide into the first corner there. Got a decent run, but he is quite far back. And now he's got Marlon McMullen looking at the back of him too. So very costly mistake there for Wayne Burke. And that'll allow Kurt Stenberg to start pushing up towards Luke Harvey, who's now got a bit of breathing room to try and work back a bit of that gap to Forzan El Nabi. Wayne Burke through the last corner. Deja vu. He just went to space before. That was a huge save. Somehow held it. So fantastic car control from Wayne Burke. But uh, we're going to get a cut price racing uh, replay up on screen because that definitely deserves one. He uh, spent a lot more time with that through that corner with opposite lock than actually turning into the corner. So uh, that's very, very exciting stuff for position number two in this fight at the moment. Luke Harvey still has that... Um, position at the moment but now with his teammate Kurt Stenberg in position number three trying to attack but they're all losing so much time to the drive of Forza now Nabi right now he's pulling away at the rate of almost four tenths a lap at the moment so fantastic pace from Forza as the rest of the field makes their way through turn number one and uh, everyone's just getting into the rhythm now figuring out what kind of pace they've got underneath them what kind of tire wear they've got underneath them and who they are racing over the crest now down the long straight everyone just starting to spread out just a little bit as we're now working lap number eight mitch mcleod has a good run but he's not quite going to be able to make a move on jordan ross thinks about it just puts him under pressure just a little bit so these two still continuing their scrap for position number nine at the moment and jordan ross has been a real surprise of the season so far and even the end of last season he was really, really beginning to outperform where we would normally expect him to be. And he's now really well and truly cemented himself as a top 10 runner. Yeah, absolutely. And as we've seen over the last couple of laps, he's been doing a good job to pull back in Michael Taliancic, even with that amount, that massive amount of pressure that uh, Mitchell McLeod has been applying the last few laps. And definitely we saw Jordan Ross uh, a little bit further down the field earlier in last season. But yeah, towards the end, he was... Uh, putting up some really nice fights and, and getting up there with some of the, the more uh, notable names in the series. So we'll be keeping an eye on him as the season progresses for sure. I'm sure we'll see a lot more exciting racing out of him. And um, also putting on a good show to display that he's uh, not going to be pushed around by people like uh, Mitchell McLeod, who's been doing a good job to apply a good amount of pressure to the back of Jordan Ross's car. But... Everyone uh, keeping fairly within check, you're right, Bo. And Kurt Stenberg has caught back up to uh, pretty much the back of Luke Harvey now, although Wayne Burke is looking very feisty and looking like he wants to get back to where he was as well. But Forzan's in the hot seat. He's got a really nice lead here. It's the perfect amount of lead that you want to have in a race like this. He's just got enough where... If he makes a small mistake on a lap, he's not going to have to worry about falling back into the draft or anything like that. So he's got a little bit of a cushion. And if he can keep that pace up and Luke Harvey's not able to keep it, you know, there or thereabouts, he could uh, he could start winning the right, you know, he's playing the, the long game right now by working that lead out. And uh, we'll see when he pits, if he decides to extend that, tank as long as he possibly can or if he decides to come in and, and uh, do the same thing get on some fresh tyres and just build out more of a lead um, be good to see but definitely looking in a strong position and uh, Wayne Burke having a nice little look at the back of Kurt Stenberg now just showing the nose and just saying mate I'd really like to get past if you wouldn't mind hurrying up but um, Kurt's holding station for his teammate there so I think he's going to be a pretty hard brick wall to move one driver that is uh, getting past a lot of brick walls at the moment is the driver of Corey Preston. And uh, he's been making a lot of moves, slowly working his way through the field. Of course, did not have a great qualifying down in P number 17, but currently finds himself uh, now up into position number 12. And on this lap, just gone, has got past the driver Brett Loxton. Next target will be Jamie Knight. So uh, Corey Preston, we've seen it a few times, just struggling a little bit in qualifying. But when he's not getting into too much trouble in the races, the race pace is very, very strong in that Falcon. So uh, we'll see if he can continue making his way through the field. 
But the issue he's going to have here is, is he using too much of his tire life early in this race? Of course, you're going to want to potentially split this into almost 15 lap stints or, there, or thereabouts. We're currently only starting lap 11, so these tires still have about a third of their life left. And uh, right now, Corey Preston really pushing, trying to get to the driver uh, in front of him of Jamie McKnight. So we'll have to wait and see if uh, he's using too much of those tires as falls in Alnabi actually getting a little bit of traffic there but um, actually managed to get through it very nicely. So no time lost at all there. But Luke Harvey still holds P number two. Kurt Stenberg still holding position number three. I don't think he's going to threaten Luke Harvey for position number two at all, but he's more of a buffer between Harvey and Wayne Burke, who really, really does not care for the safety and well-being of his rear tires right now. Yeah, it's interesting as well as uh, Corey Preston's looking very, very edgy on the back of uh, Jamie McKnight here. He might be firing it down into the penultimate corner here, and he does. Gets through nice and cleanly and makes sure not to use too much of the road on exit and not clipping the, glass, the grass like uh, Wayne Burke did as well. But just having a look at the times at the moment, um, Corey Preston's actually pretty much the third fastest car with the exception of that lap because he had to make an overtake, but he's pretty much the third fastest car on the track at the moment. And Luke Harvey's pace is overall hasn't been super spectacular. I mean, he's matching Forzan now, but I, I feel that Forzan could be just holding off a little bit. Um, Luke Harvey's fastest lap comparatively to all of those around him is pretty horrific. In fact, his fastest lap is not even as fast as the cars in from 11th place up. He's got the worst fastest lap out of them all as uh, just seeing a, a car getting out of the way of Corey Preston and co there. Um, but his pace is not particularly good. Kurt Stenberg's pace throughout this race has looked a lot better. And uh, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Kurt was speaking to Luke on, on uh, a voice oh. chat or anything as Kurt got very, very loose over that curb there, just didn't quite hit it right. Oh, and here we uh, go. the first strategy. of our, yeah, here we go, strategy. So lap number 12, in comes Wayne Burke, and he wants some fresh tires, and he's got the second fastest lap of the race. So if he can come out in a bit of a gap, that is going to work very well for him. But keep in mind, he may not have the draft, which could have an effect as well, but... I think it's really going to depend on where he can fall back into place. Oh, and Hold on, this is getting quite messy for position number 10. Corey Preston, Jamie McKnight and Thomas Hens. We're almost going to take it three wide up the hill. Somehow they get it all sorted. That was going to get very messy. A little bit of body panel rubbing up the hill there. That was not pretty in the slightest. Now Thomas Hens has to run on Jamie McKnight. How brave is he feeling? The answer is not very. But that was getting very, very dicey for turn number one. Corey Preston... Uh, had the, the two behind fighting for that position number 11 and uh, Corey himself ran wide which almost made it three wide which is not what you want to be doing heading up the hill but nonetheless strategy is starting to be played by drivers and we'll have to wait and see if anyone's willing to respond now to the uh, answer of Wayne Burke and the answer is that Luke Harvey is going to go around one more time Kurt Stenberg around Marl McMullen no one's interested except for I Brian think that Borg. was Brian Borg, and yep. that's an uh, aggressive pit entry. And, and he's Mitchell gonna be McLeod. Followed. He's going to be followed by Mitch McLeod and a few others. That's uh, Brett Loxton, I think, diving in it as is. well. So... And Wayne Burke actually came out um, not in the best of gaps. He had uh, he had the driver of... Uh, who was it? Uh, yeah, uh, I can't... Alvaro Rabanel. He had him in front, um, who was a slower car, so... He'll be hoping to definitely come out ahead of these guys. I don't think that he would have been held up too much um, as he's actually just come through now. So well ahead of those in the pits. And we haven't seen uh, any outlaps yet. So 137.4 on the outlap for Wayne Burke. We'll have to see how that compares to some of the others. But he definitely looked like he had a good amount of pace on that lap. And if I was one of the leading guys, I mean, I know we have another pit stop to go after this cycle, but uh, he's starting to get a little worried about running too deep with uh, the fourth place car making up so much time. Luke Harvey, and he has to respond to Burke. He's seen the lap times and the pace of Burke, and he's going to dive straight into the pits, and he's not alone. Tally answered him, and also Cooper Webster and Marlon McMullen, so a lot diving in. But one thing to note that I did actually find interesting about Wayne Burke 
is his pit stop was two seconds faster than anyone else who was currently pitted. So has he underfueled a little bit and is going for the undercut considerably? And uh, perhaps he was trying to find a bit of clean air and undercut to try and get out in clean air, but that hasn't worked. But nonetheless, we'll have to wait and see what Luke Harvey's pit stop time is going to be. This is going to be very crucial for his battle between him and Wayne Burke, and he's still in the pits. So it is going to be Wayne Burke who will take over that position of position effective number two. Yeah, big but, time. But Kurt Stenberg still out on track. Will he know that Luke Harvey had a slower pit stop and Wayne Burke had a faster pit stop and short fill himself? Yeah, well, I mean, Wayne, what's the gap from Wayne to uh, Luke? It's about 3.6 seconds at the moment. So And Harvey's um, got traffic too. Yeah, Harvey does have traffic, although I don't think he'll be uh, held up. Oh, no, he's going to get held up. That's really unfortunate for uh, Luke Harvey there. But um, Alvaro has not pitted, and he is technically... Oh. Or is he a lap down? I think he might actually be a lap down. He, he so is a lap down. He should he, be getting out of the way. Uh, technically, in iRacing, you don't have to, um, but it's always quite courteous to do that. Our race leader, Forzan El Nabi, now in the pits. He's in pit box number one, and he oh, he came in very deep there, almost overshot um, his, third pit, his pit box and Kurt Stenberg as well. Now, I have a feeling that Mr. Wayne Burke, I know, he's looking pretty good for this right now. Uh, Forzan doesn't have a long run out. He's dropped off the jacks, hasn't gone. There he goes. Okay, but Wayne Burke has definitely Easy. made it through there very easily. So that working very nicely for Wayne, but now he's got what, four or five laps less fuel um, than the cars behind him, and he's also got four or five laps worse off tyres. So I think uh, it seems like these guys can go roughly 15, 16 laps on fuel, and that's definitely going to work for Wayne Burke's pit window. If he can go 15 laps, that would take him to 27, and then it's only another 15 until 43, or 16 till 43. So he should be able to make that work, but he is going to have to probably extend this stop as much as he can and the other guys might be able to short fill on their second stop and so he's got to work out as much of a lead now as he can to try and uh, prevent those guys from being able to do what he did to them on that first round of pit stops i actually see this a little bit differently for how wayne burke could potentially play this i reckon right now if he could fuel save a little bit who cares about the gap to el nabi even if el nabi does get into the um, slipstream of him a little bit if wayne can just slip uh, save fuel as much as he can and then try and get one lap further into this stint than he did last time, he'll still get the undercut on El Nabi because he's going to be coming in, what, three or four laps earlier than El Nabi anyway. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He'll have an undercut, fresher tyres. You know, I think this could still work for Wayne Burke a few different ways, but we'll have to wait and see which way he will go because right now, for El Nabi, you can guarantee he's going to want that race lead back. And uh, everyone has cycled through for their first pit stops now, so... Uh, order you are seeing is the effective order and there are a few winners and losers a big loser i am actually seeing is kurt stenberg was right behind luke harvey now finds himself behind mitch mcleod yeah and he's actually six seconds off the uh off the lead and mitchell mcleod has gained four spots i believe out of that whole pit stop transaction and he was another one who had a fairly or he had a fairly quick pit stop nothing uh lightning like wayne burke did um, but still one of the faster pit stops, but he obviously came in at the right time. I felt that Kurt probably ran it a little long, just given the uh, the time difference on these fresh tires, but uh, the lap times are not staggering. Uh, they're definitely not as good as they were in the first round or the first cycle. Um, Forzan El Nabi's just done a one oh, zero. Oh, McLeod has absolutely thrown it, send it, package sent, delivered. It's all gone horribly wrong for Mitch McLeod. He came from so far back. That was never going to work in a hundred years. That's allowed Kurt Stenberg to go through. I'm not sure if we get a replay if that was on screen or not, Jay, but that was a massive, massive move from Mitch McLeod. Didn't quite work and all that time he made in the pit stops has now gone all away in one corner. Yeah, I think he might have just actually pinched a break there and uh, just locked up slightly, but that was a very costly mistake for him, and uh, that's going to really help Kurt Stenberg, who's got a bit of work to do. Kurt's race pace right now is looking pretty good. Uh, he's definitely looking healthier than Brian Borg ahead of him, so uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't put past Kurt to be having a look 
in the next couple of corners. He's uh, making his intentions very clear. He wants to carry as much corner speed through this penultimate corner as he possibly can. And that's going to give him a good run into the final corner. And he wants to get a nice exit out of the final corner and get a nice long run. Ryan Bull getting a pretty good exit there, but Kurt using every little inch of road. He's right up there and uh, he's going to go for the over... No, he's not. He's going to tuck back in. Um, I, I just noticed, actually... Uh, We've actually had a sorry. very, very large crash. Corey yeah. Preston. Well, he's, he's sideways in the, in uh, the pit lane, which is what uh, kind of confused yeah. me for a second there. We'll yeah, see. so he went for a very, very large move on Thomas Hins, and uh, the two came together on the exit lap 17 at the final few corners, if we can get a replay up on screen, and uh, Corey just did not quite uh, leave enough room there. Really, really pinched Thomas Hins, and it's fired them so hard into the wall, and big Ooh, damage to yeah. both the number Ooh. four and the 11 car. So uh, those two would well and truly be out of it, and Corey Preston not too happy in the chat with Thomas Hintz, but I'm sorry, Corey, I'm going to have to put that one on you, unfortunately. Yeah, he definitely could have moved back across the track. You don't need to, um, you don't really need to defend like that when there's possibility of some overlap. Better just play it safe, and if the guy's going to chuck it down the inside of the next corner, well, you should have been further past him in the first place, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, move on from that. Unfortunate for those guys. It was a pretty crunchy accident, and uh, yeah, they won't be coming out for the rest of the race. Marlon Mc Marlon McMullen is uh, having a bit of a... Looks like he's fuel saving a little bit. It sounds like he's not on the throttle as much as uh, some of the other cars are. And his lap times are reflecting that a little bit. Although, yeah, he is one of the slowest cars in inside the uh, top five right now, for sure. Yeah, a very, very dicey uh, battle pack just behind as well, including Brian Borg, Mitch McLeod, and Cooper Webster. Those two are getting very, very racy against one another, and they're fighting nose to tail. Mitch McLeod so close to the back of the Optico Pro Falcon. So these guys well and truly fighting. But another thing we have to watch out for as well is Forzano Nabi has chopped the race lead down so, so much. Yeah, but he's gone we'll quick. It will keep our attention with this battle at the moment as uh, Cooper Webster thinks about the inside of Mitch McLeod. Gets a little bit squirrely on the entrance, and that makes Mitch just give him a bit more room than he otherwise would have. And, and the it's same a repeat! Thing it's there a repeat! Go. Round number two, Cooper Webster dumped, damaged, and that is potentially out because that was a very, very large hit there. You can already see the performance and the, you know, the stability of that car is absolutely ruined. That was an exact replica, except somehow Mitch McLeod did not end up like Thomas Hins did. Yeah, I think the defining difference in that in that uh, incident there was is that Cooper was still making... He was still kind of exiting the corner as they made contact, whereas Corey and uh, Thomas had already kind of finished the corner, and then Corey decided not to come back across the track. They were still kind of exiting the corner there and just got a little bit tangled up with a little bit of overlap, so... That was a little unfortunate. Um, also to note that uh, while we were looking at that Corey Preston uh, incident before, uh, Kurt Stenberg did get past Brian Borg. Um, oh, and is now... the race lead. Sorry to cut across you, That's but okay. He's going for it. He's thinking about it. He's half backed out of it. He, was, he had about three different cracks of, of it, trying to get past Wayne Burke. He thought about it so many times. Didn't quite do it, but he has so much more pace at the moment. He is just hounding the back of the number seven car. This isn't going to be an if. This is going to be a when. You can see Forzan wants this lead. He has no interest in fuel saving down to the inside. And he's going to go so late on the brakes. He's getting a little bit twitchy, which could open the door for Burke. But he slides it in perfectly, makes the apex. And now Forzan Alnabi resumes as your race leader. But Wayne Burke now has an opportunity to fuel save and also make himself a bit of ground as he gets sideways over the crest once more, Zach. Yeah, he's just using those tyres um, probably a little more heavily than Forzan. Forzan's been putting in some relatively impressive times comparatively to everyone else in the last few laps, and uh, that's showing right now. But Wayne not, uh, not falling back massively right now. He'll use that slipstream to his advantage and try and keep on the back of El Nabi. But that was one of the risks that... Um, that Wayne was going to be running with this strategy is that uh, other cars are going to be able to come back at him in the latter part of this stint as we've also just gone past the halfway mark in this race as well. So I think we'll be expecting to uh, see cars 
coming in within the next five or the first i, I think the first of our, our guys coming in will probably be in around lap 26 or or 27 and uh maybe some of the guys pitting later will be around the 30 and 31 lap mark or even the 32 so still a little bit of strategy to play out here but at the moment it is advantage for zan el nabi wayne burke is looking uh very good he does have a very healthy lead over luke harvey and marlon mcmullen is hounding the back of luke harvey who hasn't been able to uh keep up the pace as much as i'm sure he would have liked after being in the lead for the first few laps of this race and kurt stenberg's also looking like uh he's moving back up towards this pack albeit very slowly his uh pace is very good uh, compared to Luke and Marlon as well. So he may be jumping up there in uh, towards the latter part of this race as well. Yeah, Kurt's doing a very good job. He's managed to break away from Borgia and McLeod, who have not managed to break away from each other. Those two are still well and truly going out. As you can see, Borg does not want to give up the spot, and McLeod is very interested in that position number six. So he's going to throw it down the inside and say, excuse me, sir, may I have that position? And unfortunately, it's not going to be open and uh, not going to be available at this time. So Borg continues to hold that P number six, but he's run himself very, very wide. McLeod has a very good run, but is it enough to throw it up the inside of turn number one? I think it is. So we'll see what McLeod can do. Can he get it stopped this time? It looks a lot better. It's a lot nicer, a little bit squirrely, and he's just about got it done, but Borgie's nah. there. So they're gonna go side by side up the hill. Who's gonna be brave? It's McLeod on the outside, not the place you wanna be, but he's gonna hold it. He's gonna keep his foot down and he is gonna take over position number six. Yeah, very if strong move the there, nice. Yeah, he got very close there. It is very hard with these cars being the lock differential to get them up this hill. It's uh, very, very difficult indeed, but uh, Mitchell McLeod putting it oh, on. Brian's lost it. Oh, jeez, that was close. Oh, watch out for Kalyansic. is going to have a bit of trouble here as well, but I suspect Brian Borg will have a slowdown, and he'll probably have to try and clear that before he uh, rounds this corner not to lose more time. And he is breaking as he's coming out of the exit of that corner, so he does still have to clear that slowdown. And uh, someone we were talking about earlier in the race, Jordan Ross, is going to benefit from that as well. He'll move up to position number eight and continue hunting down Mitchell McLeod. But uh, yeah, that was a big moment there for Brian Borg. I think he uh, just locked up a bit of a break there and almost went careering right into the back of Mitchell McLeod who had just overtaken him. Yeah, so very, very racy in the mid pack and that has not gone well for Brian Borg, but he does have very good pace in that car at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see if he can make his way back to the field. Of course, Jordan Ross and Taliansic both benefited from that but still the opportunity for him to make some more time. Forza El Nabi has finally managed to break a bit of a gap on Wayne Burke. Burke still has a tiny bit of a slipstream, but not enough for him to be fuel saving anymore. So Forza looking good for the race win. Luke Harvey is looking okay for position number three, but Marlon McMullen well and truly closing up a lot more than he was now. These guys, well for Wayne Burke, now on his 13th lap of the stint. So those tires getting very, very old. So he'll be thinking about a pit stop the next two to three laps potentially. Luke Harvey can go a little bit longer as uh, Marlon Mullen can as well. The driver you'll expect, the two drivers you'll expect to see go the longest in this stint should be Forzen Al Nabi and Kurt Stenberg. But we'll have to wait and see as McMullen gets a bit on the grass there and loses all opportunity to get a move done at turn number one as Harvey runs a little bit wide. So McMullen has to wait for another lap, but still looking very, very ominous. Yeah, and uh, Luke's been going, doing a good job to uh, keep that position for the longer part of this race. He's had quite a few people trying to take it off him. And uh, I have no doubt that Marlon will probably try and use a bit of strategy here as well to try and possibly get an undercut on Luke. So I have a feeling that a couple of cars, maybe not this lap, but the next lap around, uh, will start coming into the pits is that's when we're kind of looking at having 16 or so laps to go which is the longest that we've really seen people going on these tires but uh yeah marlin doing a good job to keep applying pressure and uh a lot of guys in this race uh have started to spread out a little bit the top 10 is still very close we've got uh gary cooper and jason cossey who are Still having a bit of draft fest down in P12 and 13. But uh, yeah, for the most part, this race is spread out a lot more than I really expected it to. But with that double pit strategy, it does open up a lot more options for uh, people. And uh, it's been 
people have been using it to their advantage very, very well. Oh, one battle I'm watching for is position number 16, and Job Stewart is under a lot of pressure from David Miller. Those two are getting very, very close into the bus stops, so the CMR racing car, which is a still a relatively new team, still making their name in the community, doing a very good job in P number 16, but how much longer can he hold on to it? Because David Miller is putting on an absolute charge at the moment. Is he going to go for a move up the inside? Of course he is. He's going to go for a move, but he doesn't quite get it in the end. Backs out at the last second, so still a very, very tight battle. And this is allowing the drivers of David Kim and Zane Parton, and also Jonathan Ben to close in on this action as well. So these guys are racing very, very hard. So it doesn't matter if you're going for the podium, the win, or anything. It's going to be, hey, I'm going to try and move at turn number one. The 17 car pulls along the 27, but who's going to be breaking later? It's going to be the 27 around the outside, sweeps through. And that's going to hurt the exit there of the 27 car. So they're going to go side by side up the hill. This is very, very brave stuff from these guys. Mirror to mirror stuff over the crest. The car gets light. Very little control. And somehow they managed to make it all work. Because they would have had to have lift going side by side slightly. This gives a very good run to David Kim. And he's not going to be able to do anything with it. Because there's a roadblock in front of him of Miller and Stewart. Who's going to be later into the bus stop? It's so late. And somehow... It's going to be the driver of uh, David Miller getting through. And uh, Job Stewart loses that spot and already looks under pressure from Kinman. This is a really, really close fight, Zach. Yeah, they were doing a really nice job to uh, keep it nice and clean there. And uh, oh, Job Stewart just got a little little wiggle on the grass there. And Kinman's going to poke the nose a little bit as well. Um, Kinman did a really nice job as well through that bus stop of not um, just absolutely smacking it into the back of Job Stewart as well. Um, so definitely kudos there. And Kinman looks like he's diving for the pit line, actually. Um, so he's one of the first people to make a stop. We do also... Um, oh, just... Marlon McMullen. He's, yeah. down, he's now into position number three. So I will get, we'll get a replay up on screen for you there. Sorry we missed that, but it was a great run over the crest there. For McMullen had so much more overspeed on Luke Harvey, side by side, and so much braver. And Luke Harvey's stop. actually just come back through, pardon me, Bo. He's just come through oh. in the penultimate corner. Uh, so Luke Harvey not wanting to give that spot up at all. And is oh. one of these guys going to dive for the pits? Yes, Malik McMullen is going to come into the pits and try the undercut. So he's going to make his final stop. Uh, Kurt Stenberg as well coming into the pits as well as Wayne Burke. Uh, our second place driver and I believe that is Mitchell McLeod in yep. the pit lane and Brian Borg as well. We've also got Jamie McKnight coming in. So um, lap 29 is the, uh, is the time for everyone to come in for a pit party and Wayne Burke will be the first to come out of here presumably unless he's got to add a little bit more fuel than these other guys. Although with such a long run to the finish, uh, wouldn't be surprising if they're all within a couple of seconds of each other. And Wayne Burke indeed wow. is the first out, but McMullen got a fantastic stop there. He didn't have to fuel much at all. And he's now back on the on uh, Wayne Burke and Kurt Stenberg getting out ahead of uh, the other cars in there too. So will Luke Harvey pit this time round? I think that he has to. Uh, if he wants to have any chance of defending that position, as he has been doing so well. Um, but, well, we'll find out on this corner here. He's just coming into the final corner, and our race leader, Forzan El Nabi, is in the pits. And so Luke Harvey. Harvey is coming in the pits too. So it's all go time now for everybody. And this is where we will really see the final race to the finish and who is going to be where. Michael Taliansish and Jordan Ross also coming into pit lane. So... I think that's pretty much everyone in our top 10 has made a pit stop now so we'll see where they come out wayne burke is rounding the penultimate corner right now coming into the final corner and looking to get a nice flyer down the main straight but oh, that still, El still in the pits and he's, he's off the jacks, off the jacks. Gone. he's gone so here comes wayne burke he's not close enough though forzan is going to make it out in front with a healthy margin. Harvey. Harvey's very slow. McMullen's gone through. Burke's gone through. But Harvey's lost a lot. Well, he did run that extra lap. And on the older tyres, that was always something that was possible to happen. Luke now has fresh tyres. But with only one lap's advantage on tyres, there's not a whole lot he probably can do with that. But it is an advantage nonetheless. And I'm sure that he'll use every ounce of his ability to get back up to... Marlon McMullen there as we just see Christian Hinton uh, nicely pulling over for all the uh, other drivers who are coming through on the lead lap. 
and Michael Talianzic has done a good job as well. He's, uh, I think, picked up a spot on Mitchell McLeod during that pit stop as well. Yep, still a few drivers yet to take their pit stop, but Talianzic has indeed got through on the drive from Mitchell McLeod. So Talianzic uh, doing a good job at the moment. He'll be in effective position number six when all the pit stops uh, manage to cycle through. But nonetheless, it's going to be Forzen Al Nabi who does have the race lead from Wayne Burke and McMullen. And McMullen did look to have better pace than Burke towards the end of that stint. But now they're on equal tyres and equal grounds in terms of fuel, more or less. So what can McMullen do now that he has equal, you know, he's on, in an equal situation with Wayne Burke? It's going to have to be max attack if he's going to have any chance of getting the position. But he also has to watch out from the threat behind. Because Luke Harvey already looks like he's taking tenths of a second out of McMullen. So Harvey, you know, he's only got one lap fresh of tyres, like you said. But he's going to throw it across the hill and really, really attacking right now. So there is no doubt about it. He is not taking this easy. Luke Harvey, like you said, one lap fresher tyres, but he's going to use every ounce of his talent to make it work. Yeah, and uh, actually the two fastest drivers on the track right now are Kurt Stenberg and Mitchell McLeod. So those guys have uh, found some pace in the, in the last couple of laps. And with Kurt having his teammate ahead of him, I don't know if he'll have to hold station or if they'll have a bit of a fight, but one of those guys has to take it to uh, Marlon McMullen and... Luke Harvey just hasn't looked like he's had the pace a lot of this race. Uh, as I said, his fastest lap is uh, not even as fast as most of the laps that these guys in the top five are doing right now. So I, I suspect that he may have to fall behind Kurt in the dying laps of this race and they'll uh, unleash Kurt to try and hunt down Marlon McMullen. But uh, Forzan El Nabi is the man with the pace at the moment. He's uh, currently faster than everyone is. Kurt Stenberg comes across the line and puts in the fastest lap the last time round. So, yeah, all the pace oh. at the front is pretty good, but... Harvey was so, so close to the wall. He is throwing this TTR Commodore harder than I've ever seen anyone ever attack this circuit. That was millimetre stuff to the wall. Somehow didn't hit it. But Harvey is flying, right, well, he's trying to fly, he's pushing as hard as he can. But Kurt Stenberg in the slipstream of his teammate right now is the drive with pace, currently doing 12 twos. Harvey doing 12 threes, McMullen doing 12 fours. They're all slowly closing in on each other, and there is going to be 11 laps to go at the line. And I am interested to see what's going to happen with the TCR cars here. Because does Stenberg have overall pace on Harvey, or is this just the draft? Will they try and save tyres with Harvey attacking now? Let Stenberg save tyres a little bit and then release Stenberg at the end on fresher tyres than Harvey and try and attack McMullen. There is so much that could potentially happen. The only driver that looks safe in their position right now is probably Forza Nel Nabi. Yeah, he's got a pretty good lead, four and a half seconds, which is uh, definitely not the largest lead that we've seen this season, but a very healthy one regardless. And... Uh, Wayne's got a fairly good buffer back to Marlon as well, so I don't think those guys are going to have to worry too much. Luke Harvey's, yeah, his, uh, not his last lap, but the lap previously was the fastest lap that he's done this race, so he's starting to pick up the pace a little bit, but um, yeah, Kurt Stenberg behind him, his teammate, is making the car work a little better and could have a little bit to do with the slipstream, but Kurt has generally looked stronger throughout the most of this race, so... Uh, yeah, I reckon this is the uh, battle that is going to kind of come down towards the uh, final stage of this race. We do still have 10 laps left, and uh, there are a couple of other cars on track that are very close to each other. I'm just having a look back at, uh, at uh, David Kinmond as well. He's back, uh, I believe he actually just overtook David Miller, who had a bit of a problem on that last lap, so... David uh, Miller's Kinnan. actually just come out of the pit lane. So oh, has he? Right. Miller has incredibly fresh tyres, so look for him to come flying through the field. It was actually very, very close. Kimmer was very lucky to get his nose across in front of a Miller, but Miller is going to be a man on a charge in his next few laps. So currently sitting in P17, and uh, you know we'll see how high he could potentially get up because Ryan Andrews, who is on relatively old tyres compared to Miller, you know, he's only a couple of seconds up the road if he does manage to get past Kimmon. So that's going to be a very, very interesting thing to watch. But I think right now we'll keep our attention on position number three because we're beginning to get to traffic. And like you said earlier uh, in this broadcast, traffic is not, you know, required to move out of the way. There, you know, it's good etiquette to, 
But if they're in a battle, they're entitled to keep fighting as hard as they want and not let th these drivers through. McMullen is being caught considerably by Harvey. Harvey's being caught considerably by Stenberg. We've got nine laps on the clock. This is going to be good. As McMullen a little bit wide through that uh, penultimate corner. And that's just a few more tenths in the favor of Harvey. And Harvey is well and truly in the slipstream range now. I think Harvey is the threat right now. Stenberg a little bit too far back. I think Harvey is the person who's going to be taking away position number three anytime soon from McMullen, who has a lot of traffic, which actually could save him. Up the hill, we'll have a slipstream as Harvey gets all kinds of sideways on the exit. McMullen will be safe on this lap with a slipstream, but after this lap, there is no helping McMullen because Harvey will be coming. Yeah, well, McMullen's last two laps have been pretty shocking. Um, he's dropped nearly half a second on both of those laps to uh, both Luke Harvey and Kurt Stenberg. So, uh, but now he's got the slipstream of the CMR car ahead of him, but it's not going to help in this next section of corners. And you can already see he's uh, had to go quite, uh, quite shallow on the entry to that corner there. And the CMR car is not really wanting to give up uh, much room as he comes off the exit there. And now Luke Harvey... This is going to be a really defining moment for Luke Harvey, but good. Oh, doesn't no. look like he's going to get out of the way. So, uh, Job Stewart getting in the mix with the boys up the front. His pace isn't terrible, um, but it's just not good enough to be really racing with these guys at the moment. So, Luke will get a nice exit out of there. And, Job, I think if I was you, mate, I'd probably just pull over just for a second. And he does. Good on you, mate. Very nicely done. So, he... Uh, gets out of the way of those guys and they can continue battling and luckily for Luke Harvey he hasn't really lost out much there at all he's still within uh, four tenths of, of Marlon McMullen which is still a, a good margin to when you're chasing the car um, so nicely done um, by Job Stewart there to get out of the way of those guys paddling uh, for position number three yeah, and there's the other CMR Commodore getting out of the way as well so the, these guys are all free to race well, they are for a couple of seconds because Wayne Burke is just in front and he's got a fair bit of traffic in front of him. He's got the battling pair of uh, Danny Martin and Val Alvaro uh, Rabinal. So those two are fighting quite hard. So they're not going to want to give up too much time to Wayne Burke who is just in front. So Burke's going to have to really, really fight his way past that battle because those two are going for position. They don't care where Wayne Burke is. They're going for their own positions. So this is going to be very tough for Wayne Burke to find a way through. But it's going to be even harder when McMullen, Harvey, and Stenberg all try and get through at the same time, as uh, they're actually very well going to get out of the way. So very, very nicely done from those two. Not easy when you're fighting for position to try and get out of the way of a faster car, but they've done fantastic there. So massive respect there. But the real challenge is about to come because McMullen has Harvey right on his bumper. This is going to be a very exciting seven laps to go. Harvey in the slipstream now. There is no doubt about it. It's no longer trying to catch him. It's the other part of the saying. It's trying to pass, and McMullen uses every millimeter of road on the exit. Probably needs a new paint job on the mirror. Harvey in the slipstream, not going to be able to get anything done into the bus stop this time around. Has a look, though, fills the mirrors, puts him under pressure. Now McMullen knows that he is under pressure, and he is going to be going as fast as he possibly can to try and get through this next two cars who have lap traffic in front of him. The dirty air through this long right hander, just hurting the understeer of that uh, PSS car. And this is going to be McMullen, a defining moment Ooh. once again. Pretty tight here. I reckon if he, I know there aren't the headlights in this V8 supercar, the flash, but I reckon he's spamming that button either way in hope. And uh, the driver of Danny Martin, they're doing a good job to get out of the way of this battle. Now, Alvaro Rabinal just has to, uh, he's going to have to stick it on the outside because here comes Luke Harvey and Mullen Mullen. Luke has a nice little run here. But he's not going to be able to do much with it. He's got cars on his outside, cars looking up his inside. And he's just going to have to keep on pushing. He has been looking very good through this uh, section of the circuit in the last couple of laps. And he is within a cigarette paper's width of the back of Marlon McMullen there. He's got a very nice run, very smooth. And can he make a move now into the bus stop? He's right there. He pulls out. He shows the nose. He's going to fire it down the inside. McMullen's just left off the gas a little bit. I think they might have touched slightly as they came in there. But Luke Harvey makes a good, smooth pass, a strong pass on uh, Marlon McMullen. And now Kurt Stenberg, who's just been held up by that traffic a little bit through that final section there. 
He's going to look to uh, pound the back of Marlon McMullen and try and let uh, Luke get a bit of an advantage over Marlon. But Luke's already checked out um, comparatively to uh, how, how, how close he was to Marlon McMullen before. So he's got a nice little advantage already. And now Kurt Stenberg will look to clamp back on to Marlon McMullen. Yeah, I think that's just Marlon McMullen trying to get his breath back because that was so late on the brakes from both of those guys. I did not think they were both going to make it through the bus stop chicanes side by side and somehow they made it through. So Luke Harvey promoted to position number three. He has to hold on for five more laps, but that shouldn't be too difficult. It looks like there is a lot of pace in the hybrid racing simulations Commodore. The real challenge for McMullen is going to be from behind. Kurt Stenberg no longer has uh, traffic in front of him to, uh, to slow him down. Is clear road in front of him, and uh, it's under half a second, so there will be a little bit of slip trim benefit, not as much as he would perhaps like, but still, Stenberg will be getting a little bit of benefit. The thing that will be hurting him is Lucavi is also giving the slip trim to McMullen. So, could TTR do something with slowing Lucavi down to try and push McMullen back into Stenberg, or is Stenberg gonna have to be left to fight his own fight? And and still make his way through. But the interesting thing to note here, Zach, is it sounds like McMullen is still fuel saving a little bit. He did have a relatively long, uh, he had a shorter pit stop than um, the three guys he is fighting with right now. But he's still fuel saving at this point and with four laps to go, it depends on how short he is, but this could be a critical situation here for McMullen. Yeah, and uh, Kurt's actually gained quite a bit on him on that lap as well so as uh, the guys behind them are just having a little bit of a biffo coming down the main straight there um but yeah marlon does seem to be doing a tiny bit of fuel saving we it's not the first time we've seen him doing that this race he was doing some fuel saving earlier in the race as well so um yeah don't really understand why that would be the case he kind of came in the same lap as most of his other competitors and um, yeah, his pit stop was roughly the same time as all of them. So I, I'm not really sure why he's trying to save fuel um, or why he would have less fuel in comparison. But uh, Kurt Stenberg's now really right on the back of him. And I don't think that Luke Harvey's going to have to worry about slowing down. And, um, you know, given the risk that's involved in letting the other car get back up into your slipstream, I don't think that uh, TTR are really going to want to risk it. And Luke's probably not going to risk it uh, not going to want to risk it himself having the final spot there on the podium but Kurt's a very established racer and he's looking more than uh, able to clamp onto the back of Marlon McMullen here and try and put a move on soon as he just ran a little wide out of the uh, final corner there you might notice the next time we come around there's a, a, actually a, a lighter piece of concrete on the inside of that corner that's where majority of the grip is on that corner so you will see a lot of drivers trying to keep it in the groove of that light piece of cement as that's where all the grip is and similarly on turn uh, number two there and turn number three on the hill here those lighter pieces of concrete actually have more grip than the other parts of the track so um kurt just uh doing a good job to keep in there but he's not looking as close as he has on on laps previously maybe that uh the front tires are just starting to let go a little and he's only got two laps now to complete a pass on Marlon McMullen here, but he's definitely within good range to work himself back up. Taliancic has just somehow managed to squeeze his way past the driver of uh, Mitch McLeod and that was very, very dicey. Those two were going side by side up the hill and Taliancic had the outside line, had traffic in front of him as well and it was so, so close between the two of them. Somehow didn't make contact in between the traffic, around the outside, into the bus stop. Taliancic with a fantastic move on Mitch McLeod there. So Mitch is going to be knocked back down to position number seven. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting fight because McLeod does still have very, very good pace in his car. So we'll have to wait and see if he can do anything in regards to finding that time back. Still, Stenberg and McMullen, they're still around the same uh, gap at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see as Taliancic dives to the inside of the traffic and gets to move out of the way. But he's compromised his exit so much. So McLeod has a brilliant run, but I think he's got his run too early. He's going to get to the back bumper of Taliancic too early. And he's got to lift off and actually not be able to use too much of the run. But he's still very, very quick over the top of the hill. In the draft now, lots of horsepower in the talking car. Is he going to do a similar move? Is he going to throw it up inside of the bus stop? He definitely thought about it, but with still one and a half laps to go, there's more opportunities to come for Mitch McLeod. We'll have to wait and see if he can do anything about it. But we go back to this battle for position number three, four, and five. Kurt Stenberg doing whatever he can 
close in on Malnok Mal, but it's not quite there right now. He has to dig deeper. He has to find something a lot extra because right now he is going to catch. Oh, he's not going to catch. And um, sorry, we have to go back to this battle between McLeod and uh, Taliantis because these guys are fighting a hammer and tongue against oh. one another as he clips the grass on turn in sideways. And Taliantis is just going to get sideways on the exit. Neither of these drivers are able to keep it on the road right now. They're going to dive their way through to turn number one. McLeod with a lot more speed, but not able to make a move now. So what he has to do is set himself up out of this corner. He goes for an ultra-wide line, probably too wide. That might be too far back now for him to get a move on Taliantic's done. So that is not ideal for McLeod. Up the hill, he'll have to pull something extraordinary over the top on the back of the circuit to make this uh, move stick. But we go back to this battle for position number four because Stenberg has really, really closed in on McMullen. McMullen not looking as strong as he was, still fuel saving ever so slightly, but he should have enough margin right now to make this work. So we'll turn our attention to Forzen Al Nabi. He started on pole position. He lost the lead early on with not a great start, but he got it back early on as well. He made a fantastic run. He got the pit stops right. And Forzen Al Nabi is going to take out round number three here at Watkins Glen. Yeah, very nice job there by Forzan. Wayne Seaberg gonna come over for P number two. Well by him. Oh, and Kirk Seaberg's got him over the line. He's run out of fuel. Marlon McMullen has run out of fuel. So there we go. Michael Taliantic is gonna come over the line for P number six. Mitchell McLeod P7. And Jordan Ross uh, picking up a nice points all there in P8. And uh, well, evidently he did need to save fuel quite badly, Bo, because. Uh, yeah, that's the second time in the last couple of weeks we've seen that happen. Jamie McKnight comes over the line, P number nine. Brian Borg and uh, Braden Bateman having a drag race to the finish, and Braden Bateman's going to lose out there to Brian Borg, uh, who got past him on the final lap. Cooper Webster comes in, P12. We've got Will Dodd and Jason Cossey coming over the line as well. But, uh, wow, that was uh, after all that, the, the great job that he did holding off Stenny for all that time. Denny had the fuel in the bag and uh, was just able to come across. How much did he get him by in the end? Not much. Yeah, it wasn't uh, too much, but it was, second, yeah. it was about eight ten. So McMullen, well and truly, ran out of the final corner. He ran out so early, so I uh, still needed a little bit more. But Forza Onabi did all he needed to do. He comes home position number one to take the win ahead of Wayne Seaberg and Luke Harvey, who round out the podium. Stenberg somehow jumped Mal McMullen across the line, fuel saving not enough for the number one car. Talianzic and McLeod fought their way for sixth and seventh. Jordan Ross, Jamie McKnight and Brian Borg round out the top ten. Yeah, that was uh, really interesting. Uh, we've got Braden Bateman who came in P number 11 just behind Brian on the final lap. Gary Cooper taking out P number 12 with Will Dodd in 13th. Jason Cossey in 14th. Ryan Andrews 15th. David Miller in 16th. David Kinman had an exciting race and came up from 24th to finish in 17th position. Jonathan Ben takes 18th. Zane Payton takes out 19th position. Danny Martin takes out your top 20 position. And he's the first of our cars a lap down. He was followed by Job Stewart, Alvaro Rabanel. Steve Janssen, and the first of our non-finishers, Christian Hinton, Cooper Webster, Brett Loxton, Corey Preston, Thomas Hins, and Brenton O'Brien, who was caught up early in the race. But um, that was a really interesting race, but I really like seeing the two-stop strategy there. Just opened up uh, a little bit more uh, in terms of, of what we saw and how people were playing things out. And we also saw quite a few overtakes being done during those pit stop sequences as well. So that was really good to see, but I, I was very uh, surprised to see, I know Marlon was fuel saving, but I, I really didn't think that he had that little fuel in the end. Yeah, I'm very, very surprised because uh, in terms of pit stop time, he was only two tenths shorter than Stenberg and Stenberg did not look to be fuel saving at all. So I guess it all just comes down to fuel usage per lap, of course, to each driver drives the car a lot differently, different fuel burns, and with such a high acceleration circuit, any slight difference in driving style could mean quite a lot in terms of fuel mileage at the end of 43 long laps. And for McMullen, one litre more could have been the difference between him and position number four, but today it wasn't to be. But perhaps 
He could get redemption if he's willing to do the Oceanic Endurance Championship, which kicks off on this Sunday at Road America, round number one, season two. The entries are huge for the series, much higher than they were in season one. We've got LMP1s, we've got GTEs, we've got a stacked grid, and in case you want even more multi-class racing, later that day, the major series, the sports car showdown at the Circuit of the Americas will be kicking off, which will be a fantastic event, the second road course event for the year for the major series. Definitely have to look out for that one. But from myself, on behalf of Zach, and also Jade in the director's booth, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.